There's one. Shall there it is. There it is. <laughs> morning is Corey welcome back to my channel this morning I plan to go out and catch some big sea trout that's kind of my goal is to go out and catch some sea trout um, right now it's about 5 in the morning and I'm trying to prep my gear and get ready I know that I'm gonna be fishing in the dark a little bit just trying to welcome you guys to the channel now we're gonna target sea trout that's the first thing we're gonna do this morning we're gonna throw some top water um, lures and trying to get those big trout to rise up and, uh, and smash them. And hopefully I can release one over 20 inches. Uh, that's kind of my goal for this morning. Also look for a tide indicator. It's gonna show the level of tide and where I'm at at it so that you guys can follow along and replicate. Also with baits, I'm gonna put exactly what it is I'm using and there'll be links in the description as well. So let's get on the water guys. 6.39, throw this spook around here. Oh, I just had a fish come up right here. Good fish. Yeah, dude. Sweet. Well, good morning. These conditions are absolutely beautiful. Um, it's got a little bit of a fog on the water, a clear sky, and pretty cold. It's probably like 48 right now. The temperature just dropped, or at least it feels like it really just dropped. I've been throwing the top water around a little bit. I got a couple little um, hits, but it was dead slack for a while. Now. Um, I think we're going to be able to get on some fish, but just look at these conditions. There's one. Feels like a smaller, oh it's a flounder. Yep. Yep. Is that the first one of the day? Flounder, you're in this little creek mouth. There's a fish right there just scaring, right here on the bank, just moving to the right. It's scaring everything as it moves. All, it was just constantly bait jumping, bait jumping, bait jumping in like a line. There's a redfish right in front of that egret. Let's see if we can see any big swells right in front of these egrets. Just trying to get near them so I can grab some of these redfish that are right in front of them. They're working. Oh, did you guys see that wake? Pretty sure that was a fish. Right behind it, look at that wake. All the way in. It probably just got scared of me right here, but that was a redfish directly behind it. And I want you guys to watch very closely in front of these birds. They're there. Saw that bird take off. Um, when it did, there's a big splash right in front of it those two birds if I can. Really careful not to hit one. That was totally my fault. I got too excited there when that redfish hit. Oh, big swirl under it. Big swirl. Come on, dude. Here. Come on, take my top water. Might have to throw my right under it. You see that swirl? Come on, man. Why aren't you eating it? Fish feeding. I gotta put this rod down and just catch that fish. I was trying to re-rig my bait here. This fish is coming right at me. Coming right at me. It's right here. Might have just turned. Super shallow. There it is. Super shallow water. There's a couple fish there. I'm gonna see if I can't stake here and uh, catch one more out of this school after. I think there's still some fish over here. We'll bring this one in right into the grass. Let's see how. I was trying to catch these fish on top water. 
first. But uh, it just wasn't happening. Alright, I'm gonna bring it in. Close, close right here, guys. Oh, man. Alright. Perfect redfish right there on that Z-Man eye strike combo. Just starting to get pretty fired up here. And they've been fired up, but uh, I haven't been over connect because I've been, I've been throwing a lot of top water. And uh, redfish aren't very good at top water. Let me show you their mouth. Their mouth is underneath their, their head because they're more of a bottom feeder. And so they kind of have to lose sight of what they're trying to eat up top for just a second as they do it. Um, it makes them not very accurate at eating top water, but they still do if you put one right in front of their mouth. That fish was ready. Look at him go. See that wake? If you guys are enjoying this content, it it, uh, it really means a lot to me for you guys to like and subscribe. I want to keep providing you guys video every week. I really appreciate any kind of feedback you guys give me. I'll be sure to implement it if it's something that makes sense. I want to hit a spot before I start going in these creeks that uh, I think might produce some trout. Last time I was here, I caught my trout off of these three isolated mounds. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. They really drop off fast. There's oyster mounds all over them. That crazy deep channel right in between is weird. Man, I just had a fish on. I felt it. I didn't do anything. There it is. <laughs> okay. He came back. So like I was saying, very trouty spot. And uh, there's a beautiful speckled sea trout right there. Man. <laughs> Again, I jerked it out of the mouth. I just get excited. I don't even, I wasn't, it's a reaction. Gotta wait for the weight. Another swirl. Come on, dude. Hit it. Very subtle bite sometimes, these trout. You gotta keep all the slack out of your line. Sometimes they'll just grab it and keep moving. But as soon as you feel that bump, you go ahead and set that hook. They're free. Hook sets are free. Yeah, I just got a hit right there. A super slow reaction because I was talking. There's a fish right there. Look. I didn't want those guys to see it. This is a good trout. Wow. Really nice trout. Yes. It's a big trout. Right there. Look at that. Rah. Pretty good fish for here in Charleston. What I'm using here, it's a seven foot medium light fast action rod. This one's a Triumph made by St. Croix. They're very affordable. This is $100. My reel is Shimano Vanford, um, but uh, this is a 3000 series. So I'm using braid. This is a, I think either 15 or 20 pound braid. And I've got a little bit of floral carbon. And uh, right here, my bait, this is, this is an eighth ounce jig head made by eye strike most of my retrieve is just dropping it down to the bottom like this drop to the bottom i'm flipping my my reel with my hand drag it with the rod let it drop and drag it back with the rod reel down the slack and that's how you keep in contact with the bottom kind of just hopping it it's important to never have much slack in your line especially when trout fishing because They'll smack it, and it's really, it can be difficult to feel them, especially in the winter. Sometimes it's just a, a finesse bite. So it's good to have a sensitive rod. Let you guys see this mound that I'm going over right here. Pretty cool, the shape of it and everything. I don't see any fish. Let's see if I can see a flounder. 
but pretty cool and then how it drops off common little thief right here there's sharp teeth on him it's a little blue fish I'm send it back all right i'm heading up this little creek right here kind of winds into some flats my buddy's over there on the flat he said he's seen some fish that mirage drive put one forward and one back so I'm just going to look into this little area and see if there are any fish here. I am on this little shallow mud flat on incoming tide. And I'm just trying to figure out where one of these redfish might be. I don't know if I see anything over there working yet. I'm going to turn around. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and end my day here. Um, it's a little bit of a grind, but we still managed to catch our slam with actually a pretty good trout. So I'm happy about that. Um, that was 18 inch, right at 18 inch trout. And there in the beginning, in that incoming tide, those redfish just started going crazy at that low tide. They were everywhere, but I just kind of wanted to catch them the way I wanted to catch them, which was on top water. I got a lot of big blow ups. I like to cover my two, my two rigs that I use. These are my artificial rigs and pretty much what I use every time I'm going out. The rig that I'm using is a paddle tail on an eighth ounce jig head. This is either opening night or some sort of glimmer but made by Z-Man. So I went to this color just because it's a little more natural looking and uh, the water was pretty clear and very calm. Another thing that I also do is I use the Procure. Make sure I smear that all over it. It does seem to help. And then I've got that on a leader. This is maybe a little short for my taste, but this is a floral carbon leader. It, it helps with your abrasion. And then that's tied on with two uni knots. That's how I'm lining to lining um, my uni knots. If I'm really prepping my tackle the night before, or I'm trying to go through smaller guides, like on the bait caster, I'll use the FG knot. It's just a little smaller profile, and it's, I think it's superior knot. But this is a great knot that you can do fast, and it's a good connection. In my dedicated top water rod, or more hard bait rod, I can fling them out pretty far with the bait caster. And, um, and then work them back with that left hand retrieve. I feel like I'm more coordinated with my right hand to do that um, walk the dog action. Another St. Croix rod, this is an Avid X. This is a seven foot four heavy action. I've tied on, this is a Rapala skitter walk in kind of a trout color. I also like the, the Super Spook Junior, and that's made by Hedden. And then also the Badonk Donk Bomber, a Badonk Donk is, is a good one. All right, all. Thanks again for watching. And if you can, please like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me if you guys do that. I'm helping to grow my channel, so I'm out here more often. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this, this one, and I'll see you all in another few days.